Sometimes it's scary how quickly the tables can turn on a coach. Just a few years ago, Sam Pittman was seen as the savior of Arkansas football. He was seen as the guy who could win SEC championships there and brought back life to a program that was completely dead in the water. After making one of the worst coaching hires in college football history, Chad Morris walked away with a ton of money and Arkansas desperately needed help. Pittman brought in a couple of star players, used his experience to his advantage, and got Arkansas football back to the top. 2021 was a breakout season for the Razorbacks and it looked like everything was going to go really well for him. Flash forward two years though, and everyone is begging for Sam Pittman to be fired. People are sick and tired of KJ Jefferson being underwhelming. People are questioning the state of the program. And now it looks like Arkansas football is back in the downfall. So what exactly happened? Well, in today's video, we're gonna go through the rise and fall of Arkansas football, talk about what their issues are, what the future could hold, and just my overall thoughts on the state of the program. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, quickly be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you love college football content, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's get started and talk about the sad downfall of Arkansas football. Sometimes in these long videos, I like to go way back in time and talk about the past, but in today, the video is gonna be broken down into three parts. We're gonna talk about how the state of the program got so bad for Arkansas to begin with, aka the Chad Morris era, talk about how Sam Pittman rebuilt the program and all the hype that came with it, and then the downfall. Now, let's start with part one. Let's talk about how awful Chad Morris was for Arkansas. Going back in time, Chad Morris ended up going to Texas A&M and then went straight into coaching in 1994. He ended up becoming a Texas high school football legend as he quickly climbed the ladder, eventually becoming the guy at Lake Travis High School. That's one of the premier high schools in the state, and after that, he got his jump into college coaching. He ended up going with Tulsa in 2010 before he became the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Clemson. This was his big break, and after doing well there, he ended up jumping ship and became the head coach at SMU. While he was there, he really did do a pretty decent job. His first two recruiting classes were all Texas kids, and he rebuilt an SMU program that was completely awful. During his time there, he led the Mustangs to a 14-22 record and improved each and every year. He went from 2-10 to 5-7 to 7-5. While I wouldn't necessarily say that made him qualified for the Arkansas job, he did at least show he could coach a team up and build a program somewhat, and he did it at a place that was really struggling. Because of that, Arkansas decided to make him the new head coach. This came off the heels of Brett Bielema, who got his rise at Wisconsin, but could never really figure it out and put it all together at Arkansas. The Razorbacks quickly ran him out of town and thought that Chad Morris was going to be the savior. Arkansas fans were mainly excited for his recruiting, and to be fair, he was a good recruiter. But the tenure was absolutely disastrous, and to probably their darkest period in school history. The 2018 Arkansas team really didn't have a whole lot going for him, as they couldn't figure out the quarterback spot, had a log jam of running backs, and didn't have a single receiver over 500 yards. This absolutely showed on the field, as besides a win over Eastern Illinois, it was a completely disastrous season. They lost to both Colorado State and North Texas, went completely winless in SEC play, and their only win came against Tulsa. The worst part about it though, was that pretty much every single game was a blowout. Besides the Ole Miss and LSU games, conference play was an absolute disaster for them. Going into 2019, everything would have to change. Despite coming off the first 10 loss season in school history, there still was some hype for him because of his recruiting, but that would quickly evaporate as well. They barely beat Portland State at home in week one before getting throttled by Ole Miss in week two. Morris would get his fourth win against Colorado State before things would fall apart even more. It started with this. They lost at home to San Jose State, lost a heartbreaker to Texas A&M, and lost another heartbreaker to Kentucky. In those three games, they were competitive, and some thought they would turn the corner. Nope, he completely lost the locker room as they then proceeded to get blown out by Auburn, blown out by Bama, blown out by Mississippi State, blown out by Western Kentucky, blown out by LSU, and beat by Mizzou. The Razorbacks had now lost nine straight games, and Chad Morris was done. Arkansas fans were so unbelievably tired of this that they fired him only 10 games into the season. He really did go down as one of the worst tires in school history. He went 4-18 in his two seasons there, and became the only Arkansas coach to have left the school without a conference win. I'd argue there aren't many coaches in college football who haven't gotten a conference win. I don't really know what went wrong for Morris during his time there, but there was no player development, they obviously couldn't win a game, his coaching hires were sus, and it just seemed the lights were way too bright from there. Arkansas completely whiffed on the Chad Morris hire, and now it seemed they're going to be set back a decade. Some were longing for the days of competitiveness under Brett Bielema, and now the Arkansas administration would really have to nail their next hire. Who would they get? Well, they got a guy that Arkansas fans were already familiar with, and someone who could turn around the program in the trenches. His name was Sam Pittman. Going back in time, 
Pittman played defensive end at Pittsburgh State and got into coaching in 1984. He ended up coaching the high school level and even the JUCO level for quite a while before he became the offensive line coach at Oklahoma in the late 90s. He even coached at both Missouri and Kansas on the offensive line and eventually got his first big break at Northern Illinois as the associate head coach. From there, he went to North Carolina, spent time as the offensive line coach at Tennessee in 2012, and then was brought to Arkansas under Brett Bielema. From there, he was the associate head coach and the line coach for the Razorbacks from 2013 to 2015, before he did such a great job there that he became the offensive line coach at Georgia. Everyone knows Kirby Smart does a great job at hiring good coaches, and he excelled as both a line coach and a recruiter there, and Kirby even made him the associate head coach in 2019. After climbing up the ladder and being familiar with Arkansas, the administration decided to go out and hire him. At the time, this was met with extreme criticism. Many Arkansas fans wanted Elijah Drinkwitz instead, but while many thought Pittman was going to be horrible, there was some optimism that they got that they got an underrated gem as a coach. Many were excited for his recruiting, his ability to his ability to develop a program as a lineman guy. He had a great personality, had ties to the program, and had had a ton of SEC experience for quite a while. While a lot of people memed Pittman, he would start to turn things around immediately in 2020. The Razorbacks didn't really have a ton of hype but they returned a few key players that helped turn things around. They brought in Florida quarterback transfer Felipe Franks, grabbed Traylon Smith out of the portal, developed wide receiver Traylon Burks, returned star linebacker Grant Morgan, and developed one of the top defensive backs in Jalen Catalan. All those guys played with a chip on their shoulder, and in their first game, they gave Georgia a scare in the first half. While the Bulldogs would eventually pull away in the second half, there was a feeling of optimism around Arkansas after this game. After that, they went on the road and beat number 16 Mississippi State, and everyone was all aboard the Pittman train. In just his second game, he had went on the road and beat a ranked team, and after three straight years of horrible play, people were pumped. After that, they lost on the road to number 13 Auburn, but there was an extremely questionable spike call against Bo Nix, and honestly, Arkansas got screwed in that one. They could have easily won that game, and after that, they came home and beat Ole Miss. While they were 2-2, two two, Arkansas football was solid in 2020. After that, they were competitive on the road against Texas A&M, but where they would beat Tennessee at home. The team was now 3-3, three and three, and people were pumped. Unfortunately, they'd finished the year losing, but it's not like they weren't competitive. Besides blowouts against number 6 Florida and Alabama, they lost by way of a game-winning field goal to Missouri, and only lost by 3 to LSU. In total, in 2020, Pittman's Razorbacks went 3-7, and seven, but felt like a team that was about 500. So going into 2021, Pittman had brought in a solid 21 class, but more importantly, brought back a ton of key players. Former big-time recruit KJ Jefferson would now step in as the starting quarterback. He brought back both Traylon Smith and big-time recruit Raheem Sanders at running back, and then Traylon Burks became their superstar wide receiver. Combining that with a terrific defense and Barry Odom back as the defensive coordinator, Arkansas was a team going under the radar. They ended up being picked to finish sixth in the SEC West, but they quickly outdid that. In week one, they destroyed Rice before a huge matchup with number 15 Texas at home in week two. In this rivalry matchup, Arkansas absolutely took Texas to the woodshed. They ran down their throats and won 40 to 21. This was the biggest win of the Pittman era, and things would continue to go up for them. After beating Georgia Southern, they would face number seven Texas A&M in Jerry's World. In the Southwest Classic, Arkansas got out to a big lead and ended up beating A&M 20 to 10. The team now had two top 15 ranked wins, were 4-0, and were playing their best football in years. Unfortunately though, they would get humbled as they lost 37-0 against number 2 Georgia, lost in a thriller by 1 to number 17 Ole Miss, and then dropped a game to Auburn. The Auburn loss was unacceptable, but losing to Ole Miss and Georgia really wasn't that bad. While they were now 4-3, Arkansas would still have a great season. From there, they'd beat Arkansas Pine Bluff, knock off number 17 Mississippi State at home, and then go on the road and beat LSU in overtime. This was pretty insane, and from there they'd climb back into the polls and go on the road and play number two Alabama. In this game, KJ Jefferson went toe to toe with Bryce Young, and they only lost 42 to 35. This was a Bama team that ended up getting to the national championship, and while they lost, many were thrilled at how competitive Arkansas had become. To finish the year, they destroyed Missouri at home and got a chance to play in the Outback Bowl against Penn State. They ended up winning that game 24 to 10, and in Pittman's second year, the team went nine and four. They had beaten three ranked teams and knocked off two other perennial blue bloods. Arkansas football was headed in the right direction, and they had some star players. KJ Jefferson was terrific at quarterback, Raheem Sanders was about to become one of the best backs in the country, and Traylon Burks would head off to the NFL. This was the absolute peak of Arkansas football, and now unfortunately, the downfall begins. Going into 2022, there was a considerable amount of hype for Arkansas as they began the season ranked number 19. In week one, they would knock off number 23 Cincinnati, and while it was ugly, it was a big win. From there, they'd also beat Spencer Rattler in South Carolina and take care of Bobby Petrino in Missouri State. The Razorbacks were 3-0, and then the downfall really began. 
They lost by two to Texas A&M, got absolutely throttled by Bama, and got throttled by Mississippi State. The team was now three and three, and their confidence was pretty much dead, but they would respond. They went on the road and beat BYU, and then took care of Auburn on the road as well. Granted that Auburn team was horrible, but they are now back up to five and three. From there, they would end up losing at home to Liberty by two, which was an awful loss for them, and then lost a heartbreaker to LSU. They are now back down to 500, and luckily they beat Ole Miss to get to their sixth win before losing on the road to Missouri. The team went six and six in the regular season, and they basically beat everyone they should beat and lost everyone they should lost to, besides Ole Miss and Liberty. From there, they get selected to play in the Liberty Bowl against Kansas, and despite an incredible performance from Jalen Daniels, Arkansas would survive in three overtimes. Pittman would go seven and six in year three, and the team was really anchored by a couple of star players. KJ Jefferson was all right, Rocket Sanders became one of the best backs in the country, and linebacker Drew Sanders became one of the most dominant defensive players in the nation as well. While they would lose Sanders, they would return both Rocket and KJ going into 2023, and many expected Arkansas to be a 10-win team. Outside of LSU and Bama, many thought Arkansas would be favored in every single game, but unfortunately, it has really not gone according to plan. What many people really weren't talking about was the fact that they lost Barry Odom to UNLV and Kendall Bryles to TCU. This would end up having a huge effect on the program, as despite two early wins against Western Carolina and Kent State, Arkansas has been a complete and utter disaster in 2023. It started with a loss to BYU, who's not any good, and then a loss on the road to LSU. Yes, they were competitive in that game, but that one was heartbreaking. After that, they lost pretty handily to Texas A&M, and then dropped back-to-back -back heartbreakers to Ole Miss and Alabama. While three of those losses came by one possession to good teams, October 21st was the low point of the Sam Pittman era. In a game at home against Mississippi State, they only managed to put up three points and ended up losing 7-3. This game was absolutely ridiculous, and at this time, Arkansas fans wanted Pittman to go. This is now the sixth straight loss, and they are more than likely going to miss a bowl game. Luckily, they would get it together and finally win a close game, though, as they would go on the road and beat Florida in overtime. But they went back to their losing ways this past weekend, and it looks like the team has officially given up on Pittman. They got blown out 48-10 against Auburn, and Auburn does not have that good of an offense and is not that good of a team. That right there shows me that the team has basically quit, and with games against FIU and Missouri coming up, there's no chance of a bowl game, and they're more than likely not going to beat Mizzou. So we're more than likely looking at a 4-8 season for Arkansas. Their only decent win will come against the Gators, and they will have lost to pretty much every Power 5 team on their schedule. Right now, Arkansas fans are begging for Pittman to be fired, and honestly, I'm still split. If he ends up going 4-8, then yes, that was an extremely disappointing season, but I don't think things are as bad as Arkansas fans make it sound. I mean, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top three teams in the West, and had a couple of plays gone differently, Arkansas could be looking at a solid season. But again, they did lose those games, and the momentum is obviously going off the rail. It also seems their new coordinator hires aren't going great, KJ Jefferson has regressed horrifically, and based on the bar he set in 2021, he is no longer living up to that. And right now, it just feels like the sky is falling for Arkansas. So what has exactly happened? Well, in my opinion, there are three reasons why Arkansas is on the downfall this year, and why Pittman can end up getting fired. One, Barry Odom and Kendall Riles were much more important to this program than many thought. Barry Odom at one point was a laughing stock after his time at Mizzou, and his ability to have a good defense is something Arkansas is truly missing right now. He's also showing how good of a coach he is, as UNLV could have a nine-win season in just year one. Kendall Bryles is also off at TCU now, and while the Horned Frogs aren't great, I think Bryles will be better than what they have now. Losing those two guys has been big. Two, there's been a lack of player development. I've really not been super impressed with anyone on this roster this year, and it just seems that literally nobody has stepped up. You brought back two bona fide stars. The lack of player development and leadership at this point is pretty embarrassing, and it doesn't seem that Pittman was really able to take advantage of the rise in 2021, as they're just not getting the right guys in the program. Finally, the third and most crucial reason why Arkansas sucks this year has been the letdown of their two star players. So far through the season, Rocket Sanders only has 60 carries for 194 yards and two touchdowns. For a guy who was projected to be the best back in the SEC, this is an awful stat line. To be fair, it is not all his fault though, as he suffered an injury in week one and has just not been able to bounce back from that. It still doesn't make it any less disappointing though. The other guy is KJ Jefferson. For a guy who started the last two and a half years, Jefferson has really regressed. At one point, I thought he'd be a mid-round draft pick. Now, I don't even think he's gonna sniff the NFL. He has completely stagnated, and this season is not great. So far, he only has 1,900 yards with 16 touchdowns and 8 interceptions, and while the numbers themselves aren't even that great, more importantly, he's not elevating the team, and he's not winning games. There's no reason why KJ should be playing at this level, and I really hope he does not come back, although he probably will. So it may not be the exact answer you're looking for, 
But Arkansas has been disappointing this year because of losing some coaches, a lack of player development, and their star players falling off. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen from here, but based on how the college football coaching landscape has changed, I do think Sam Pittman will be fired unless they win out. If they go five and seven with a win over Mizzou, then there might be enough to save his job and give him one more year in 2024. Right now though, it's probably not going to happen, and Arkansas fans have already given up. It also looks like the team has given up, and it might be time for Arkansas to go back to the drawing board. But what do you guys think? If you're an Arkansas fan, what has gone wrong this season? Why has the program fell off? And what do you think should happen for them? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what team, player, topic, or situation I should cover next. Subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about how Kalen DeBoer rebuilt Washington football. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.